So you've already been introduced to three shortcuts, SSS, SAS, and ASA. Today, throughout our lessons, we're going to learn the last two shortcuts. One you're going to learn with me, and one you're going to learn here by yourself. So the first thing we're going to do is just refresh some stuff. Obviously, if we have a triangle here, and we know this is 121, and we know this is 34, could you find this angle here? Of course. So we take 180 minus 121 minus 34. So this angle here would be 25 degrees. So as a rule of thumb, that if you're given any two, on, two angles of a triangle, you can always find the third angle. So then, let's go to our next slide. If we look at this, and we know that this angle is congruent to this angle, and this angle is congruent to this angle, then we know this angle would have to be congruent to this angle. So we know this would have to be congruent to this, because for example, if this was 100 degrees, and this was eight, um, 50 degrees, this was 100 and this is 50, these would both have to be 30. And then these triangles would be congruent by angle, side, angle, which is a shortcut you learned yesterday. So since they're congruent and we are, if you're given two angles, then we automatically know the third angles are also congruent. And then I ask you, are, they, are these triangles congruent? Well, yes, as of yesterday, you know that these are congruent by angle, side, angle. So it brings us to our um, new postulate. And the new postulate is if two angles and a non-included side, the side that is not between those angles, are congruent to the same thing of another triangle, then these triangles are congruent. So let's look. I don't need to put in this angle and then say these are congruent by ASA. If I get this picture, then I can easily say these two triangles are congruent by angle, angle, side, and ABC is congruent to DEF. Okay, so then I ask you to look at this type of picture and ask you if you're the congruent. So maybe pause the video here and take a second to see if you could figure out why. So by looking at this, I'm trying to talk about triangles C, E, D, and C, B, E. Well, if the con picture's confusing at all, the best thing we could do is separate these two triangles. So now when I look at these two triangles, I realize that they both have a side congruent and they both have an angle congruent. But what you need to realize is that before separating these here, what angle are they also sharing? So if they're overlapping, they're definitely sharing something. So they're definitely sharing these sides, but they are also sharing C. So I can take my angle mark and draw on C and say that this angle is congruent to this angle. So now when I ask you what postulate proves them, you have an angle, angle, side. So AAS, and then if I needed to, it would be ACB, ECD, if I needed the thing. So just as a yes or no, pause the video, try to see if you think these are or not congruent by AAS. Since it has two angles and the side not in the middle, so it does read AAS, then yes, these are congruent. Take a second, think about this one.
So remember, these two are touching, so I can put this angle is congruent to this angle because they're vertical. Vertical angles are congruent, so that's why I can do that. Now that I have that, I know that I have an angle here, an angle here, and a side, which reads angle, angle, side. So again, yep, this is an example of AAS. Go ahead and take a second, see if you get this one right. So again, I can draw this because they're vertical. But when I look at this triangle, there is no side mark ticked. And I can't just pick up my pencil and say this is ticked and this is ticked because this looks like a midpoint. You cannot do anything unless it has justification. So that's all I can do. And therefore, that's angle, 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 in which we are not a towing comp company, AAA. That's not us. So that does not even prove triangles congruent, nor is it congruent by AAS. And then this takes us to my, um, okay, why don't you try this one? Go ahead. So if you take notice here, this and this are congruent which then makes this congruent by SAS. So don't forget that it doesn't always have to be AAS. Okay, so let's look at back at our note sheet, on the back of our note sheet, and there's a different style question that the textbook asks, or I will ask on a test or quiz. I'm asking you what other information is needed to prove that these two triangles are congruent. So I have triangle LMN and LQN. But right now, all I know is that they have side LM and they have side QN congruent. What you are allowed to do because they're touching is mark LN congruent to LN because of the reflexive property. So now when I look at this, I have two side lengths, but that's all the information I have, which is not enough to prove triangles congruent. So the problem is asking you, what else would you need to prove it by side, side, side? So if I already have one side and I already have another side, I obviously we would need a third side congruent to a third side. And so what you would need is LQ to be congruent to MN, and since they're segments, they get bars over it and they need to be labeled correctly. Okay, so similar problem for the next one. When I come to these problems, what I'm going to do is notice I want it to be SAS. So when I come here, I obviously have one angle congruent to an angle. So I know I have the angle. I know that they are touching, so it's okay to mark this congruent, which means I have a side. So the only thing I'm missing is another side. Well, what you have to be careful about is you need the side that's missing to put the angle in the middle. So if I mark this over here, let's just say, then when I look at this, it would be angle, side, side, which we know ASS is not a postulate. So it is not that side. So even though you have to be careful, so it has to be that they want this side congruent to this. And so you need to note that MN must be congruent to VL. So why don't you go ahead, that was two of them, why don't you try this one on your own, pause the video, give it a second. So if I want ASA, I can see that I already have an angle. So I'm going to cross out angle knowing that I already have one. I have nothing else marked, but I know they're touching. So when I come here, I know that this angle and this angle are going to be congruent. So I have two angles, so what am I missing? An S, S stands for a side. So the side I'm missing though has to be smushed between the angles. So if I marked here, would this be the included side between these angles? Hopefully you say no. Would this side be between the angles? Hopefully you say no. So here is the side I need that would be between the two okay. angles you see that AG, and then hopefully you see that the segment between these two is here. 
So AG has to be congruent to GF. All right, go ahead. Why don't you try the last one by yourself? Oops, sorry. Okay, I don't have your last slide printed, so freehand sketched real quick, C-A-T and D-O-G. Um, I want to know what else I'll need for them to be congruent by A-A-S. Well, I already see that this has an angle congruent to an angle, so I can cut that off. I already see that this has an angle congruent to an angle. So I already know that there's two angles already taken out. So the only thing I'm missing is a psi. And actually, you just have to note that the psi can't be between the angles. So the only side you can't pick would be AT congruent to OG. What I could pick is this side congruent to this side, so I could say CA congruent to DO, or technically you could say angle angle side, so you could also say CT congruent to DG. So either answer would actually be okay in an angle angle side. So hopefully now you can do this quick the quick worksheet with a couple problems that has AAS, SSS, SAS, and ASA. Remembering that we never use AAA, we're not a towing company, and we don't use ASS. Okay? Thanks.